£2,301.42. This may sound like a weird question, but... Why don't snooker players vlog? I'm just an averagely good snooker player who basically films himself playing mediocre trick shots for YouTube in an old dilapidated garage. But in the last 28 days, my YouTube channel's got 1.3 million views, earning the equivalent of £2,301.42. You have to wonder how much more successful this channel would be if it was following around a top professional, or in fact, any professional. In a lot of sports, it's not unusual for competitors to keep a video diary or vlog. And for some of the more flamboyant and exciting characters in the game, this would be fairly easy to do. So why don't they? Now I do have a theory, but it's late and I have work tomorrow and I've got to take the back lanes because the main road's shut. Okay, so it's five o'clock in the morning. I've been up since four, and the only real reason I'm still coming here to work is because I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. And I'll explain in a minute, I've gotta to go to work. Oh. So at the moment I'm thinking, do I or don't I go full time with YouTube? But either way, I realise I'm lucky enough to be able to come home and practice and play snooker whenever I want. And this isn't something everybody gets to do, especially at the moment. A lot of the routines I practice are actually in the Couch to 50k video I made a couple of months ago. It's in the card if you want to have a look. Because there's no real reason to play at the moment, I'm not massively excited to play, although I am playing quite well and trying to sort something out with my technique. Something I've been working on a lot recently is trying to keep my technique the same shot to shot. I noticed recently that when I bring my cue back to play the ball, often I bring my body up in the air like this and almost sort of drop back down again as I play the shot. And it's sort of unnecessary and something I really want to stop doing. Normally from this point in the season onwards, I have a match, league night or tournament between two to four times a week. But other than the old practice game, that's all cancelled for the foreseeable future. But today I've got a game with somebody, somebody actually far better than myself. He won't want me filming any of it, but I might be able to get in a few sneaky shots. Okay, didn't play bad there, lost 8-5 I think, but I had a 70 break at the end, so pretty good really when you consider I haven't really played in six months. I would have been kept playing longer actually, but there's something I want to do when I get back. Should have done this a long time ago. Europe. Just like the area around North India and Pakistan and the United Kingdom and Ireland, Europe's getting pretty full. So now we've got our own map for it, we can find Alexander from Burgos in Spain, which is about there. Janice and Rosin from Cien, France. Nisoja from Turku, Finland. Jacob is from Prebram, Czech Republic. A lot of the places in the United Kingdom are quite full up. This gives us a chance to put Alex in from Birmingham in the UK. I think that looks pretty good. Europe's been getting really full on the world map for ages. But now I think it's time for a completely different type of training. I think it can really help you snooker to do something you find just a little bit scary. It doesn't have to be anything like this but I find it's a bit like a horror movie. Your instinctive reaction might just be to glue your eyes tight shut, but if I did that now...
Let me show you what I mean. If you're afraid to miss a pot, that isn't really a problem. The problem is when you try to deal with it by ignoring the pressure, because that can almost be like closing your eyes and hoping for the best. Being less nervous won't help you pot the ball. Nerves aren't a good or a bad thing. What will help you pot the ball is lining up correctly and getting your technique right. So that's what you need to focus on whenever you've got a pressure shot. Now something else that can be a little bit scary is trying to reply to all of your comments. So I came up with a bit of a solution to this and a different way to do it inside this video. We're going to go for a walk. Okay, Adri Mirasu asks, how much faster do you think competition cloths are compared to what you're using? Well, so I've got this Gary Wilson shot set up where he rolls up dead weight to this red. So if I can repeat that and we play it side by side, you should be able to see how much faster is a professional table is really than mine. So that might not be hard enough. You can see how much slower mine is. Oh, I just missed it, but you can see how much quicker my table pulls up than the one over there. The good news is the cloth is still pretty reactive compared with every other table I play on, so you can screw back very easily, which is good. Limey Pride said, how do I come up with this stuff? Well, most of the time it's sitting on this bench. It's usually a better view than this, and this is just where I come when I have no idea what to do next. I come up to this bench because it's a lovely view and it's fairly easy to get to. As with most benches, it's got a history, this was presented by Southwest Water on completion of the sewage treatment scheme in 1997. Thanks, Southwest Water. And is there any computer game that actually feels like you're playing snooker? And to be fair, no, but I think the closest you can find is quick snooker. I've made a video on it earlier. Go have a look. Frankie from Peterborough in the United Kingdom has got all of his friends to subscribe. Thanks for that. I don't ask for subscribers a lot because it just seems needy. Fire. But, I mean, we're nearly at 100,000 subscribers, so thank you to everybody who's got involved and just watched the videos, to be fair. Dermot Shaw said he liked headcam videos. We're probably going to do more of these. Just the problem is... I need a wider angle camera because I'm either stood up looking at the lights and perfect when I get down on the shot or looking down perfectly at the table when I'm stood up and when I get down on the shot you can't see where I'm aiming. So it would be really helpful if you guys could tell me what camera you think would be best for you know using a head cam while playing snooker. Gamma 212 asks, did I edit this on an iPad? Fascinating. And yes I did. And because I'm an idiot this is the crazy way I edit my videos. Once I come up with an idea, I write it down on the whiteboard along with a load of other related keywords. Although this usually takes me most of Saturday and Sunday to work it out. What annoys everybody who's seen this is the T doesn't have a capital letter. Once I've got an idea, it's then time to come up with a trick shot. This can be something I've thought of myself over the last week, but usually it's just something I nicked out of a book or off YouTube. It can take some time. By this point it's usually Monday and I try to get all the filming done for the video on Monday and Tuesday. This is the Sony FDR X3000 camera that I use to film all my videos. It's not the best camera in the world, but the big advantage with it is I can export all of the videos just directly to my iPad. The secret to YouTube isn't slickly filming yourself in the highest definition possible. It's about what you're offering. For example, advice or information, like this red down the cushion. If I play it with exactly the right amount of side spin, sometimes it can make the shot easier to play. You can also offer entertainment value, but when you do, just remember it's not really about the people involved rather than what they're doing. That people find entertaining. My iPad is just the easiest way to make videos that are good enough for YouTube. 
Even though it's not ideal and editing the clips still probably takes me the whole of a day, usually Wednesday, it's still the most efficient way for me to do it. I then usually try to get any voiceover parts of the video recorded by Thursday, which then leaves me the whole of Friday to get any graphic overlays and music done and just upload the video. The success of which usually depends on, again, what you're offering rather than how well the video itself is made and the quality of it. And on that, we're really close to 100,000 subscribers now, and we've just unlocked YouTube membership. Now, if you don't know what that is, that means we can create our own paid content. Now, I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad idea, if I were to do it, I wouldn't make any less free content. It wouldn't be like you had to sign up for anything or you'd be missing out. I'd just do a couple more things and I have the idea of I've got these like big pins so I can stick your name on it so everybody that's a member of the channel can have their own special pin of where they are in the world on the map or any of the maps. But just let me know what you think of it because I'm not sure whether or not I'd to do it yet. I'm not sure if it's a good or a bad idea. But Back to why snooker players don't vlog. So why don't snooker players vlog? Well, I think it's partly because most of them don't have the skill set to be able to do it. If you don't have a massively exciting life, then it's going to take up a lot of time to film things and possibly even talk about interesting things and find interesting things to talk about every day or week or however long it is. But I think it's mostly because they don't want to subject us to such a simple, dull format. I mean, how many daily videos like this one am I going to make before you get bored? That's just a joke. The chances are I'm never going to make a video like this again. So next week, normal service will be resumed. And if you want to see an example of that, have a look at these two videos. And remember, don't just watch, play. And make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.